feel like uh, there's been a dialogue about with rocket engines and, and having to fuel them on Earth and then having to carry so much of your fuel out of our gravity. And part of the idea of being like, of trying to find sources of other fuels possibly around the solar system. You spoke about the ion drive that's looking at asteroids and the asteroid belt and such. As a, a propulsion expert, we talked about like solid fuels and the, mm -hmm. those different kinds. What kind of ideas are there for rocket fuels that could maybe be salvaged from other parts? Have you thought about other fuels outside of Earth that they're, you're trying to figure out? Yes, we have. That's a great question. And for the Internet, the, the question is, is there a filling station out there? Do we have to bring it all with us from Earth? That's paraphrasing. But uh, uh, essentially where we've thought about this most is on Mars because the Mars atmosphere um, is 95% plus carbon dioxide, which is, doesn't make such a good fuel. But if you could, uh, there may be ways to take the CO2 and combine it with water to, um, let's see, what would, or with hydrogen. And then so I've got, uh, let's see, hydrogen, carbon, and oxygen. So I think I can make methane and oxygen. And then those two make a good fuel and oxidizer, respectively. So there are processes, chemical processes on Earth, we know we can feed CO2 in with some hydrogen and then get out um, you know, methane and oxygen, and then use that on a rocket. That's been talked about in a mission called Mars Sample Return. Because a, a, a question I get from the kids are, what, how are the rovers, how do they get back to Earth? They don't get back to Earth. They live out their, their life. One day, hopefully, we'll bring back the Smithsonian. But if we had the ability to get anything back from Mars, rather than bringing rovers for our own vanity, we want to bring soil samples and atmosphere and gas and dust. And so that is a mission called Mars Sample Return. And one way to do that is to, you send a robotic probe a year or a couple years early, Mars and Earth line up every two years, two months for a mission. So you send a probe there, land, and then start making your fuel plant. You build the, you make the fuel. That's called in situ propellant utilization. And then you've got your propellant. Maybe you land your your rocket, fuel it up, and then you can bring samples back. And this has also been talked about with the human exploration of Mars. Before you get humans down there, maybe you go down and have some of these fuel producing plants. Um, to uh, not not plants, plants, but I mean, uh, you know, devices, mechanical devices to, to have things fueled and ready to go before you commit to sending humans to Mars. It's a great question. And it does, the, as you kind of hinted, the problem is if you bring everything from Earth, it gets really expensive. So we want to use, the, if you look at Western expansion of the U.S., the, the, the folks that did the best learned to live off the land rather than try to bring everything from the East Coast. So it's kind of the same deal here. We want to use the in-situ resources of Mars. And we found the water ice, right? So we think we can get the water there. Maybe you can use a big nuclear reactor, break the water into hydrogen and oxygen, and you wouldn't even have to bring your hydrogen from home then. You just use the hydrogen and the CO2 to make your methane and oxygen. So lots of those things are being thought about and even tested. Uh, we're, we're trying to build some rocket engines that use that propellant combination as a test. It's not used too often, but methane and oxygen is an example. 